Right, Milwaukee gun. We have power. Let's see if she fires. No. Pull the battery out. Put it on again. Not good. Right. That's not what you want. Flashing a warning. So the motor's starting and she's trying to run. But you're just getting a gear sort of grinding noise out of it. Pin. It's not sticking out. Normally, the way these actually work, they're actually under pressure constantly. These are a pressurised gun like the Aikoki. So the back chamber is under constant pressure and the pin is trying to be shot forward. Even whenever the pin is shot forward, the back is still under pressure and it has to be ratcheted back to compress the gas even more for it to shoot. Once she's ready to shoot with the pin back again, the pin's either going to be back or sticking out proud. If the pin's back, she's ready to shoot, that's under maximum pressure. The pin has actually compressed all the air all the way back and she's under max pressure to shoot. So once the motor moves, she'll fire. You can hear that motor running and clicking, but the gun's not firing. If the pin was sticking out, the gearing mechanism would be stripped out. The pin will have been shot because she's under pressure and the motor hasn't taken it back again because there's a stripped gear. But the pin's not sticking out. So in other words, more than likely this thing's under no pressure. It's probably lost all the actual compressed gas inside, so there's no pressure to fire the pin. The pin's sitting back here now, without any pressure to shoot it once the motor turns. She's just grinding and clicking away because she's not doing anything. It's missing the actual teeth to drive it back again because the gun hasn't actually fired the pin. So I would guess this is a gas problem. And because she's a Milwaukee, that is a problem. This is not like the Hikoki gun that you can just regas. Milwaukee, make it difficult for you to do that. The Hikoki uses compressed air to actually fire the pan. This is using compressed nitrogen. Nobody has compressed nitrogen lying around, so most places don't regas these things. Plus, if you look them up in the breakdown, this is the wee crown stapler gun. The FM FN CS 18 GS spare parts for this are next to nothing. You can buy the controller for the motor, the clamshell, the actual rotor, the whole gearbox assembly, a couple of other little bits, magazine, the actual chamber, firing pan, all that sort of stuff. Not even on the breakdown. Can't even get the breakdown for this thing on the Milwaukee website. So parts and repairing are basically non-existent. I have no air fitting to fit this gun to regas it. Somebody's actually been on this before. That screw has completely rounded out. Somebody couldn't get it out and it's totally stripped out the head. Of course I need that out. For getting that screw out, left hand drill bit. And she was well stripped out. Another wee hidden one. Right, there ain't much in this thing. We small controller, contacts for your switches, your stitter and controllers on all, all one piece. I'd imagine this is part of it as well. Your rotor is a separate piece, your gearbox is a separate piece. 
and this actual driver unit up here that's a separate piece so you can hear this run whenever that motor runs this top piece here this ratchet turns one full rotation you can just hear it clicking that's because the pan is already back here whenever it runs she's just clicking off the edge of the pan so that thing's actually set upright so she runs just like the cokey gun whenever she's sitting like this now you can see these teeth these pins and the ratchet she's sitting on the last one so that pin is sitting on this last pin under pressure so once this motor turns and this rotates around a little bit that pin's going to fire then once it fires the teeth for taking it back again will be down here the first pin here will then engage and drive it back again but once that motor turns she begins to turn there's no pressure on here the pin doesn't fire it just stays where it is and all you're hearing is these here wee rollers these wee pins just knocking off the edge of the first tooth of that there driver pin so she's doing everything she should do apart from fire because there's no gas in here and of course that's a problem because how do we get gas onto it Different size again. Screw you there out. So then we can lift this up, stick out this plug. Inside of here is just a wee air fitting, one way valve. You push it on to release the pressure. And as you can see, there ain't no pressure in there. Right. So there's any way to regas this. Okay, we'll try it this way. You can get PCP pumps, no air rifle pumps high pressure pumps they actually refit this here or to refill it same fitting on the end of the pump but don't have one of them so we'll try a different way so this is a 1 8 BSP coupler or adapter so there's a 1 8 BSP thread on this side and a quarter inch BSP on this side a quarter inch is to fit a normal female quarter inch coupler I'm going to use that on this, screwed onto that, hooked up to the air compressor to see if we can regas this thing. Now, I don't know how well this is going to actually seal to actually stop the air leaking out, but hopefully it'll work all right. It's not a proper tight seal fit, but it should still allow the air to get in and get enough pressure to actually force back the valve in here to allow air in. You don't actually need a pin to engage the valve. The high pressure this side should engage the valve and force it open to allow the air in. Now the reason for Milwaukee using nitrogen in these things is nothing but a heap of nonsense. Nitrogen, the actual particle size of nitrogen is bigger than most of the particles in the air like oxygen. So in theory, nitrogen should be harder to leak out of this here because they're bigger particles. But that's a bit stupid, really. Air, actual 
air that we're breathing, compressed air, as 78% nitrogen anyway. So it doesn't really make that big an odds of just filling this thing completely with nitrogen. Compressed air will do the same thing. And as we know from Milwaukee, they have a massive problem of the gas actually leaking out anyway and needing to be regassed. It'll be better for them in the long run to actually make it easier to regas it with air instead of just using dedicated nitrogen. Right, let's see what we can do with this. Let's get that out of the way. So the other thing we want to do is we want the pan forward so we're filling this entire chamber with compressed air. You don't want to fill it up with the pan back because if this assembly moves she's going to fire. You want the pan forward before you fill this here. And I also took these two screws here out thinking they were attaching this to the body. It wasn't. That's what holds on the actual gearbox assembly onto the chamber here. So put them screws back in again. We want this rotated around a little bit. So we'll just do that by hand. And there's another problem. Look at the state of that. Manufacturing fault. Cut through the wires. That wire is meant to go up here on a cross. Instead they've just sat it there. And the actual head of the gun has actually cut through the wires. And crushed. Look, it's cut through there as well. How was this even working to begin with? So that's another thing we have to fix. See what I mean by working Milwaukee guns, I just do not like it. So that's what your mechanism's doing. She's just rotating this, and that only goes one way. Can't go back the way because she's locked. Because obviously you don't want this to actually back off whenever the pin is under full compression at the front of it. So we're gonna wind that all the way around. 340 degrees so this here gap here is in line with the pun right so now whenever I put gas into this that pun will actually come out so first off well, we'll see if we can get gas into it first before we even bother trying to fix that wire. Right, hook the airline up and see if we can get some pressure on. I'm going to put 90 PSI into this, see how it runs at that. 90 is not all that much, but like I say, whenever this is running, that pan's going to compress that 90 PSI and increase the pressure again. So hopefully 90 should be enough. So on the compressor. that down to 90 PSA well that's not going to work a coupler to a coupler is not much use I was thinking of the other airline fitting the normal feed for just the blue line it's a PCL that's what I need This would make more sense. Hopefully this works. Right. That has not fired the pan. Right, mistaken. There's a safety lock on that as well. So I can't get that to pressure until I remove the safety lock first. Try this again. Right, should have copped onto that. We're working on this end now. We have to release that pressure again. It's 
So, so this is what's holding me back. As we leave it here, locks against the pin and stops it from firing. Unless the solenoid's pulled on. So once it's pulled on, the gun should fire. That out, move that. Just pull the pan out by hand. That's it, fully extended, so this whole chamber is full now. So I should get away with just filling this. Yeah. I'll just take this out on its own. That air leaking is just because I don't have a great seal on this. That should hopefully be putting in 90 psi. That should hopefully do. Now, that should be her repressurized now with compressed air. Do you stick it all back together again? As well, make sure no pressure gets out. Just put that bung back on again. We're just about ready. Next thing is fix this wire. So do we soldering job on this to reattach it? That was just an awkward repair. And this wire I can't see sitting all that great now. So I'll have to make sure it definitely doesn't get nipped again. To do the trick. Now we're getting everything back together. So that should be up here, I'd say. Track that wire on. That 
it's actually all right. The solder joints are just here. So it actually gives me room. Actually tuck in quite well. There's enough spare wire down here as well to pull up the slack to solder on. There's something down there. That's something down flush. I think we're just about good to go. That's something on there. Probe something on top. This one here, it's a totally different screw. It's a machine thread screw. It's a T9 or a T8 head on it. I'm starting to wonder if that broken wire was the original problem. Somebody else had actually dismantled this gun and emptied out the gas. When they were working at it and then couldn't figure out the problem maybe it's a bit odd that that wire was broken and there was no gas inside i would assume that wire had to stop the gun from firing in some way i think that's the inside sorted Get it all screwed together again now. now. The first thing this gun's going to do whenever you power it up, switch her on and everything, plunge it down, pull the trigger. She won't fire because the pin's already out, but then she'll actually, after she tries to fire, she will ratchet the pin back and put it under compression. So then the next time you shoot, it should then fire. So hopefully, this works. Right, hopefully this does the job. Power it on. Sounds better. It looks like 90 PSA wasn't enough. She's firing. And she's working, but she's not sinking them. So we're going to have to open up again and increase the pressure. We'll probably put it up to about 120 or 130 PSA.
same thing get your pan fully extended I'd imagine there's a maintenance mode for this same as the Hikoki for getting the pun extended I'm afraid I don't know that sequence I'm not going to go start locking it up now just going to do a quick re job on this once it's hooked up she's at 90 PSI I've actually adjusted the pressure screw on the control box of this compressor to increase the max pressure so We'll get her to recharge again. So that's at 8 bar now, roughly what 110 we're getting out of it. If I go any higher, it's going to set off the actual pressure release valve. So that's that. Pressurized now to 110 psi. Hopefully that'll work. This thing's just becoming more hassle on its worth. See the information for this just isn't out there. I don't know what pressure to put this to. Trial and error to get it right. Second time lucky. Better, but not perfect. They're still proud a little bit. So 110 just wasn't enough. Back in again, and we'll put it up to 130 this time, or see if we can get it to 130. That can be a problem because normal compressors like that wee Vivor one only go to 8 bar. Now, I did increase the pressure by adjusting the set bolt on the control box to increase the pressure it goes to, but it's an 8 bar compressor, it has an 8 bar pressure release valve. Once it goes above, it blows out the pressure out of that. So, that only went up to at max 110, 115 PSI. So to get it up even higher again, you have to block off the pressure release valve and get it up to 130. Temporarily, mind you. So that's what we're going to do this time. Or buy a PCP compressor or pump. The likes of air rifles. And that'll actually have more than enough pressure to put into this. But for a normal compressor, which I'm using, it's just a bit light. This is where you become an expert at machines on exactly how to strip them down and repair them. Once you do it so many times, you start learning the quicker way of doing it. So this is the third time getting into this one. We're starting to become an expert at it. Same thing, release that pressure. We want to wind this forward and put the nails.
That should be less than the pun now. Also relieve your lock. And we'll push this forward. isn't what you really would be recommending people do. It is what I need to do to get higher pressure out of this. Just for this little job. Increase that. I've temporarily tipped up the pressure release valve so it doesn't blow off too early. That'll allow this to get up to a little bit higher pressure, maybe with 9 bar. And you're going to start this up and let this to get up past 8 bar, maybe about 9 bar or 120 psi. That should hopefully be enough. And obviously once I get this running to the right pressure, I'll undo what I did here and put this back down to 8 bar and remove this tip. Because you wouldn't want to leave a compressor or something like that. Now, run the compressor. So that's just past 120 PSA. I pressurise the gun. Let her sit for a second to equalise. And that should be her. We hope. And people wonder why nobody wants to fix Milwaukee nail guns. Make sure your motor and your gearbox are sitting on correctly. Check your motor by looking at the bearing. It should be seated on fully. If it's not seated down, give it a stator here, a wee twist, until it drops on. Third time lucky. Now, pan still sticking out. So it's the first shot that's going to take that back. Right. Hopefully this time she has the power. Much better. In the fresh piece. So this one is from the second time pressurizing it. 
there the first time and there the second time so you can see now I'm going down flush in other words that'll do the job So I put that up to 125 PSI and that seems to be the pressure it needs to actually sink the nails. So if your Milwaukee gun stops firing, you need to repressurize it with a 1 8th BSP fitting and your compressor to 125 PSI with the pin fully extended. And that'll get the gun up and firing again. So the question is, why was it still working to begin with? With those wires broken i should have looked before i actually put it back together again what them wires are actually going up to was a sensor or not let me know in the comment section if you know them three wires what were they actually doing should that gun even have been able to run with those wires broken like that i'm not sure i know whenever i first started firing it it was definitely attempting to fire i was going through the motions it just wasn't shitting the pan maybe that was the fault to begin with but you definitely didn't have any air these Milwaukee guns, whether the Crown gun, the second fix, or the first fix guns, honestly, I wouldn't recommend them all that much. If I was buying a cordless nail gun, I would definitely be going with the Hikoki gun or the Metabo HTP. Simply because Milwaukee ones aren't all that repairable. And I'll show you what I mean with a breakdown diagram of this here one here. So this is the parts diagram for the older version of that gun no pan assembly just an entire chamber all this one piece same thing for your probe and everything if you actually need even just the tip for your probe you have to buy the whole thing whole gearbox assembly one piece that we safety catch controller and then the motor unit all one piece rotor separate magazine can't even buy the spring for it you have to buy the entire thing now that's the older gun you see all the bits for it but they're all gripped together in assembly so you can't buy individual pieces this is for the new gun the one i was just working on your whole gearbox assembly one piece your actual ratchet one piece motor unit stator and controller all one piece and the handle chambers not even listed nor the magazine anything like that there can't buy any of that so very very little available for this gun and even on the Milwaukee website, that's the parts list for this gun. They don't even give you a breakdown diagram. They give you the parts, the name and the numbers of them. But you have no idea what it's in relation to. They don't even give you the parts diagram. On other sites they do, that's all that's available. So if you break your pun, you brought your button, your gun, anything wrong with the chamber at all, the firing pin assembly, that's it, gone. That there costs about 50 or 60 euro. Rotor costs about 50. That costs about two or two or 300 euro. There's not really much else in this. The actual ratcheting system for driving your pin back, that's another 50 quid. This doesn't actually fail. It's only ever the actual rollers that fail on it. So really, if anything breaks in this gun, forget about it. You'll be dumping it and buying a new one. Repressurizing it's the only thing you can actually do. So that's generally why well, I just don't recommend these things. They're not designed to be repaired. They're designed to be a fancy tool that are good and powerful when they're working, but once they stop, that's it. Dump it and buy a new one. If it's outside of warranty, sending it to Milwaukee might not be an option, but you'll have a hard time finding somebody to actually do the repair for you to regas this thing. That's the problem with them. But if you want to do them yourselves, that's the fitting you need. A one eighth BSP fitting, so this is actually hydraulic fitting with another quarter inch BSP thread in the end so you can put on some sort of tail or coupler for an air compressor. The first one I put on actually hooked it up to the gas regulator so I can adjust the pressure. That was on a high flow line, had to change it then to a low flow line because I just had it, took it a direct feed off the tank to get maximum pressure. But that's her 125 PSI, 1 8th BSP fitting, that'll do the job. But anyway, that's it folks. 
give us a wee thumbs up if you're enjoying the videos give us a wee like and a subscribe and if you have any comments or want to ask anything drop us a comment down below in the comment section cheers